In this video, I'm going to share with you a game changing AI tool that will quite literally 10x your productivity. Now, if you work with any type of designer, then you know that typically what happens is they work in some kind of Figma file, right? They do all this fancy design, they make it look great, and then they send you the link and they say, go build this, right? They just kind of dump it on you and say, build this in React, build in React Native, and you do all of the coding and the layouts and all of that kind of stuff. Now, that's fine, but it always seemed a bit silly to me that I had to do that because Figma is already well structured, right? We already have things kind of laid out in groups, components, all of this stuff. Why am I just taking this Figma file that already looks fantastic and going and writing it in code and then continuing what happens when we want to change a button color or the design changes now all of a sudden i got to go look at the new figma figure out what changed and then go change that in the code hey! now fortunately i'm not the only one who felt this way and that's why now there is an ai tool that will take your entire figma file and translate it into code so whether that's react react native and it doesn't just give you a bunch of garbage kind of boilerplate code it gives you real functioning code that's reusable and looks just like a human wrote it if not even better it stubs out the different function calls. It allows you to have interactive elements. It's a complete game changer. And the name of this is Locify. Now, the best part is this is completely free and Locify has even sponsored this video. So for me, this is fantastic because this is a free tool. I don't need to tell you guys to buy anything. It's awesome. It's something I would share with you probably for free and I'm going to get paid for it. So just wanted to let you know they are the sponsor of this video. Take that for what you will. Regardless, I'm going to give you a quick demo now and show you how Locify works. Really, it's a low code tool that's just meant to increase your productivity. It's not replacing programmers or UI designers. There's still a lot of stuff that you need to do with the design, but it's saving you all that upfront design work and kind of manually translating designs into code. All right. So the way we get this set up is we simply open a Figma file. This is just a plugin for Figma and you go right here to where it says plugins, go to find more plugins and just type Locify. Now you can install this. You see there's about 80,000 people using it already, probably a lot more as this video is going live. Anyways, I'm going to click on run and it's going to pop up this extension or plugin for me. Now what you need to do is connect your account. So I'm going to connect to an account and then we will locify this file. All right. So I just connected my account here. And now that we've done that, what we need to do is create a new project. So I'm going to go here and go to new project. I'm going to go with demo app like that. Then you can select the framework. In this case, I'm going to go with React because this is a web application. You guys can pick. You have Next, Gatsby, HTML, CSS, React Native, etc. Now here you get a bunch of different options. I'm going to go with Tailwind because that's what I've been using recently, and I'll leave that in TypeScript. Obviously, we're going to want TypeScript here for React. OK, so let's go ahead and create that project. Now, I'll just give you a kind of summary of what we need to do here. So obviously, not every single Figma file is going to be as easy to translate to code as others. So that's why what Locify will do is essentially run an AI analysis on your file and tell you all of the things that you need to fix and actually automatically fix most of them for you such that you'll be able to actually transform this into code. So kind of the first few steps here are to optimize your design to tag the interactive elements. You can edit some of the styling, do like hover effects and that kind of stuff. Then you can add actions. So you can say, I want this button to go to this page. I want this pop up to appear. So you can actually do quite a few things here that typically you'd only be able to do from code. You can just do it directly from Locify. Then you're going to sync this to the Locify builder, which is kind of the online IDE, which then allows you to push that to GitHub, make pull requests, branches, etc. But generally what you're going to do here is you're going to optimize the design do the interactive elements, edit the styling, etc. So let's go through step one here and optimize our design. Now, this file is kind of already set up for this demo. So quite a bit of this is done already, but you'll see there's a few things that we can change. So here it says remove unnecessary groups and frames. So this will get rid of any unnecessary nesting really that you don't need. Notice that we can fix individual elements or we can just press fix all. So I'll go with fix all here. The AI just does its job. I don't really even need to think about this too much. Uh, and then I can go to the next step here, which is to convert groups into frames. So we have this group object and said we want a frame. OK, let's fix that again. I don't really need to think too hard about this. I can just kind of let it do it. And then we have applying best practices for images and rectangles. So now same thing. AI does the analysis. We can apply all of these. And then we have some more kind of complex fixes we can do here with structuring the frames. We actually don't need to do that for this design. So for now, I'm going to go done with this fix. You can see it kind of says pending fixes. I'm going to say done with that because I had the home page selected. All right. So now that we've done uh, those main fixes and we've kind of optimized the design, the next thing to do is tag our interactive elements. So I'm just going to go and select my home page up here. OK, let me just make this a bit bigger, by the way, too, so I can kind of see what's going on here. All right. And now we have the option to either auto tag or to select different elements. So what I'm going to do is go select my button here because I have a button, this search flights button. 
that uh, is not tagged yet. So I'm going to kind of click into this. So now I'm on search flights. And what I'm going to do is go and tag this. So to tag this, I'm going to say that this is a button. But notice I have a bunch of other things I could tag this as. When I do that, it gives me an option to select any of the different components from my UI library. So this is essentially saying I want to use a material UI button or an ant design button. In this case, I'll just go with none. And then I have some other options here, but for now we'll go with none. OK, so now that I've tagged this button, you'll see that if I click on preview here in Locify, what this will allow me to do is actually kind of hover over top of this button and see that this is an interactable element. So it takes a sec to load the preview here, but you can see now once it kind of loads, that if I hover over this, I get that kind of mouse action indicating that this is an interactable button. Whereas for something like this, it's not interactable. I just get the normal mouse. So you can go through and kind of tag all these different elements. That's what the designer would do for you. And it's automatically going to stub all of the function calls and event listeners as well so that you can then go and kind of hook it up after and do what you need to do with the more advanced logic. Now, we also have the ability to auto tag. So if I press on auto tag, AI again is going to analyze the entire document uses something called loco AI, and it's going to show you everything that you should be tagging. Now, you don't have to tag it. Obviously, it can make mistakes, but it's quite useful. And I also will show you here all of the things that are already tagged. So this, again, is kind of set up for the demo purposes. Obviously, you would normally have to go through and tag some more stuff. Uh, but in this case, it only be suggesting us a few things. So we have these two little icons here that we want to tag. So yes, that is a button. OK, so let's tag that as a button. So I'm going to select none for the UI library. OK. Let's tag this as a button as well, because that's a button. And then this is a form, so we can go ahead and tag that as a form. We could fill in all these properties, but we don't really need that right now. OK, so now we have completed tagging, and we now need to do the styling and layouts. So if I go to my styling and layout, actually, first, let's do a preview. And I'll kind of show you that obviously what can happen sometimes is you can have your designs not being responsive enough. So maybe when I shrink the screen or I make it too large, uh, the layouts kind of get all messed up. So here you can see. If I take this and I kind of shrink it, you'll notice it looks really weird in this main section here when this is too small. So what I can do is actually set different breakpoints here, just like I would in CSS, and then I can change the different layout at those different breakpoints. So what we want to do is we want to take this kind of search container here and we want to make it so that this is a vertical layout rather than a horizontal layout such that everything will kind of stack all nicely. So let's do this. What I need to do is kind of find this element so that I can affect the layout. So the element for this is going to be the form input row. So now that's selected here. Then what I'm going to do is go to the tablet breakpoint. So that's kind of what it looks like right now. And I'm going to change this to be vertical. Now, when I change this to be vertical, we'll give it a second here. And you can see it automatically kind of fixes the layout for me. And now I have search flights down here. And as I start getting smaller, you can see that everything kind of scales as it should and looks all nice. All right, so that's what we'll do for now. We also could go to like the button and we could add a hover effect. So if I go find my button here, so let's close the preview and select the button and then let's go edit styling. You can see that I can go to hover and I can do things like change the color. So I got to find where my color is. It's right here. OK, let's make it like a bit darker. All right, that's done. Now, if we go to our preview. OK and we hover over the button, you should see that we get that darker color. So here now you can see when I'm hovering over search flights. Now I get the hover effect. And again, we can do some other stuff here, but that's fine for now. OK, so let's get out of the preview. And now we go down to action. Now inside of actions, you can do things like scroll into the view, change the page. You can open an external URL, open a pop up. I'm not going to go through actions. We don't really need to set anything up for right now. So now that we're done all of that, we'll actually sync this to the builder, which is kind of the final step where now what we're doing is handing off from UI to the developer. So I'll click on sync to Locify Builder. It says we can do all of the frames or the selected frame. In this case, I'm just going to do the selected frame, which is this one page that I'm working on, the home page. But obviously, you could do all of them at the same time if you want. For the project demo app, yeah, that's correct. OK, we could change this if we want to at this point, but now I'll leave that there. And I'll go to view code and builder. So we'll give this a second to run, then I'll start kind of showing you the code, how we do the components and whatnot, uh, and how we can push this to GitHub. All right, so this is finished syncing. Now I'm going to go to view code in builder. Now, again, at this point, this is where the developer would kind of step in. It's kind of an IDE for them, and you'll see that they can actually view all of the different code. And I'm not going to go through all of that. All right, so we've loaded up here. You can see that I've got all the code available to me now, and it's automatically created a few main components for me uh, for the different pages that we have. So we have the home page, we have this Matterhorn pop up, uh, portal pop up, etc. And you'll notice if we come inside of here, it's already stubbed some of the different states. 
uh, and some of the different actions that are going to be performed for us. Now, as we go through here, you can see that not everything is uh, kind of in a component right now. So what we do need to do as the developer is decide what we want to be a component, which is kind of the next step. So here it says uh, kind of create components. So let's just look at this step again. Uh, can I go back out of here? It says make components, configure the code and then sync, export or deploy. Now, if I go to make components, it should actually automatically give me some AI recommendations here, which it is for the 12 different components that it thinks that I should be making. Now I can set these, change them, etc. But it even specifies what the different props should be. So in this case, it's talking about these kind of containers saying this should be the flight main container. And then these are the different props and the values that we're going to have for those props. So I'll go ahead and accept those two instances. Now it's saying we want to have a trip container. So I'll accept those ones as well. Hotel container. And in fact, I'm just going to accept all of these because I'm pretty sure these are all good. I can obviously change them after if I want to. So now this will create components for all of these different things. So now we have our main components. We can go change the props if we want to or kind of view through them. So now if I go back to the code here by just pressing on this button up at the top, you'll see all of the different components and the entire project essentially. And we can start looking at the different components that have been created. So we have the trip container. Right inside of the trip container, we have all this different stuff. And then again, we could continue and make more components if we want. We have the portal pop up. We have the hotel card container specifies all the different prop types where we're using TypeScript. So it automatically puts all of that inside for us. And this is doing a really good job at making this actually flexible enough that as a developer, we can go in now and adjust things and change things. So now that we've used the AI to create some automatic components for us, I'll show you that we can manually create some as well. So for example, maybe we want to convert the profile photo or the notification or actually the section there inside of to a component. Well, the way we can do that is we can find where that is in our tree. So in this case, the account section is right over here. So we can press on the account section and then we can simply go here to make components. We can press on create and then we can go to make component. Now notice whenever you have this little link icon here, this indicates that something is a component. So the search section is a component, the top header is a component, etc. So if I go here, and I click on make component, I can make the name. So let's go with account section and click on create. And now we've converted that into a component. So now you can see since we have the link here, this is a component and we can look inside and see the code for this individual component. Now, obviously, I can go add props and styles and some other attributes to this component if I want. But for now, I think that's all we need. So now what we can do after this, let's go back to the next step is we can configure the code so we can specify if we want to change it to JavaScript, CSS modules, etc. In my case, this is fine. I'll leave it how it is. And now we can actually export this code if we're happy with how it's looking right now. So if I click on this, we have a bunch of different options, right? We can sync one component. We can sync all the components. We can do the entire project. We can also export them. So we can either sync with GitHub. We can export as something like a zip file or we can deploy the entire project, something like Netlify, Vercel, GitHub Pages, and just automatically be able to see our design kind of come to life. So that's useful for anyone who is a designer. Now you don't really need to know much about code. You just press a few buttons, let AI handle it for you. Now all of a sudden you have a live production application and you didn't even have to write a single line of code. Anyways, let me go to sync project with GitHub, which is what we'll do. I'm going to connect with GitHub, kind of go through these steps and then let's have a look at the repository. All right. So I've synced with GitHub and I'm just going to make a new repository. I'll just call this Locify demo like that. OK, let's go confirm repo and branch. And then it's going to give us the ability to push all of this to GitHub. So we can kind of choose what files we want. In this case, I'm going to go with all of them. So I'm going to push that to GitHub. Let's give that a second. And then I'm going to show you what happens if we have conflicts, because Locify actually has an AI tool that helps you handle conflicts between the design and then whatever you've actually done in the code from, say, your local machine. All right. So I've just opened this up in GitHub. Now you can see everything was created for me. I'm just going to copy the URL for this and I'm going to go now clone this and then open it up in VS Code, make a change and then show you how we can handle the conflicts from the Locify builder. All right. So I've just opened up the cloned project now from my local machine. What I'm going to do now is just make a change in here, push that to GitHub and then show you how Locify can automatically handle any of the conflicts and keep the design in sync with the code, which is a pretty cool feature. So what I'm going to do here is go to where I have this search flights button and I'm just going to change the color. So rather than having where is it BG orange, I'll just go with BG black and then I'll simply change this to say flights finder or something. I know it doesn't really make sense, but we're just doing some simple changes. So now we'll just make a commit. We'll say kind of change button and then get push origin main like that. OK, and now this will update the repository. 
All right, so now that I've made a change here, let me go back to my Figma file, actually. I'll start making some changes in Figma. I'll resync that with the builder, and then I'll show you kind of what happens here in terms of the conflict resolution, which is automatically handled for you. So let's go to this button here. Okay, so let me click into this. We're going to go to Edit Styling and Layout, uh, and I want to change the color of this button. So how do I do that? Go to Normal, scroll down. Okay, Color, let's make that something like this kind of pink color, okay? We'll go with done, and then we'll just sync this to the builder. So let's view that in the builder, then I'll try to push it to GitHub and show you what happens. All right, so it says this is ready, so let's go to the code builder now. Now from here, all I'm gonna do is just sync this directly to GitHub, because I've kind of changed the color of the button. So let's go here to sync, and we'll go sync project with GitHub. All right, so notice here, as we try to do this, it actually pops up and tells us that we have some conflicts. We also have a modified file inside of Tailwind. So what I can do is click on my search container here, which has the conflict. I can go resolve conflicts, and then I can go through here and see all of the changes that are on Locify, as well as which exist inside of the repository, just like I would inside of a normal kind of GitHub UI, right? So in this case, you can see that I've just made a change to the background color here. It says BG pink, and then here it's BG black. So I have to decide what I want to uh, accept here, sorry. So I'm going to accept the GitHub change, which is on the left side, and on the right side would be the Locify change. OK, so that's pretty much it. I'm now going to mark this as resolved and then I can complete the merge and the push. So just like we have kind of a conflict resolution for us in VS Code, we have that in Locify, meaning now if a designer does something inside of the Figma file, you can actually go in and decide what you want to keep or what you want to change. So if I want to push this here, I just select the branch name. In this case, it's main. I gave it access to main so it can push directly to it. And now we'll see that those changes will be applied inside of the repository. All right. So with that said, I think I'm going to wrap up the video here. This is a really cool tool. As you can see, we literally went from a Figma design to a fully functional project in just a few minutes. This is something I'm definitely going to be using as a part of my startup. And even though this was a sponsored video, I hope you guys got a ton of value from it and you're able to check out this completely free tool by clicking the link in the description or by checking it out with Figma. Now, just as a last point here, this isn't something that's designed to replace you as a programmer. It just meant to kind of accelerate your workflow and allow you to spend more time on the complicated logic and hooking things up and APIs and all that kind of stuff, as opposed to doing that general design, which again, kind of should be automated for you. If a designer is already doing all that work, why are you repeating it now and just translating it into code? This is a fantastic tool. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.